Welcome to Brandstorm, the podcast that talks to the people behind America's brands. I'm Dan Trzinski, president of Platypus Advertising and Design. And I'm Nancy Christopher, PR director at Platypus. Our guest today says he empowers brands to know their customers. He works for the world's largest survey on the digital consumer, representing 2.5 billion consumers in 45 countries. Please welcome Chris Hopkins, a sales development representative for Global Web Index. Thanks for joining us, Chris. Hey, thanks guys for having me. I'm excited to be on here. Well, we're excited to have you. You know, your company went from a one-man band in a room in a house to the world's largest survey. How did that survey come about? Yeah, no, that's a great question. And one of the stories we love to tell when we're, you know, going over Global Web Index and, you know, exactly how you mentioned, it started as a one-man band and now, you know, a global company. So our founder, Tom Smith, used to work at MRM McCann. And he was there for a number of years. That was, you know, his first job out of college. And working there, he was working specifically within the strategy and analytics and insights departments. And, you know, around the time of 2006, 2007, when the advent of uh, different social media was popping up, MySpace, Friendster, and then ultimately Facebook, he was getting a growing number of demands from his clients that he was working with about how do we get research on, you know, what people are doing? What what can we do? You know, basically, it was this black abyss that no one knew anything about, but knew that it was gaining all sorts of popularity and specifically around quantifying and being able to better understand digital consumers, how they're interacting online, how they interact on social media, all those types of things that wasn't being captured by the old guard of market research and what he was receiving within his team at McCann. He quit his job, went back as, you know, any you know visionary and founder does, came up with his own business model and went around, pitched the idea to a thousand different companies just getting rejected. You know, we're comfortable with where we are. We, we don't really see the need for this, um, so on and so forth. But one of the clients that he had from his time at McCann was Microsoft. Well, that's a good client. Yeah. <laughs> Very good client. Yeah. So, and they're actually, been a client with us still today. So this was back in 2009. So they are our longest standing clients, um, been with us for uh, 10 years at this point. And that was really the, you know, the entry into this. And from there, Tom worked, was working with different product people, engineers to develop the platform, ultimately the countries that were asking this in. And then one thing led to another and kind of here we are today. So what type of information are you gathering? Yeah, we operate our own surveys, and we do this on a quarterly basis. Questions that are being asked, and we create our own surveys. We have an entire research and insights team that develop these, and we have um, relationships with different panel providers across the world that help to operate and coordinate and you know handle a lot of the logistics around administering these surveys. And what we're trying to get is the full digital life of a consumer. So while we'll catch a lot of that black and white data, the demographics, who you are, age, gender, all of that stuff, where we're really trying to focus and what's great about our model being respondent-based and first party is we're able to really validate different types of psychographic data. So attitudes and lifestyles, online activities and behaviors, media consumption. How does the internet play a role in your life? How does it play a role in your purchase journey? Are you interacting with brands? How often are you on Facebook compared to Twitter? Things like that, you know, passive data capturing models really, you know, fall a bit short or lack the the sense of accuracy that I think ours does through the surveys. What kinds of companies are interested in what you do? You know, who are your clients? The short answer is anybody. Um, we, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Spoken like a true salesman. <laughs> We really kind of find that sweet spot are advertising agencies such as Platypus right. and publishers and brands that are trying to take this a little bit more in-house. So handling their own you know, strategy developments, because that's been a big trend is within you know, Fortune 500 brands, Fortune 1000 brands, kind of handling a lot of this. Um, phasing out agencies, you know, in, in a sense of damn them. Some of this a little bit more in house and have a little bit more autonomy around how they're doing this instead of, you know, giving a, a cutting a check and giving a lump sum of money to an agency and basically being hands off. This allows to do a lot of the research and the strategy development on their own. When you say a publisher, are you talking about like a, a television group or something where yeah they're selling their data to other people? Yeah, so newspapers, magazines, gotcha. television um, networks, anything like that. We, uh, you know, we work with the New York Times to uh, Turner. So, how does a brand or marketing agency work with you? Explain how the relationships work. Do I come to you and say, "This is what I want to know, Chris"? 
tell me how to get there and you develop a survey specifically or do you already have the data on pretty much any question I'd want to ask? Yeah, so we want to be able to give kind of the tools and allow you to run with it yourself. We collect our data again on that quarterly basis through the surveys and do it in 45 different countries. After everything is audited through our own research and insights team, as well as the work that we're doing with the panel providers, it's scrubbed for any sort of inaccuracies or inconsistencies. And then that's fed into our platform. And the platform is really that sandbox that brings the data to life. So that's where you're able to actually build out audiences, analyze the different data points, different sorts of cross-tabbing functionalities. The intuitiveness of the platform is great. I come from a background in advertising, and I remember having to reach out to my research department and ask for, I don't know, demographic data in Buffalo. And they would send me this outlandish Excel document, and I had to basically figure out pivot tables myself. So this is almost like a pivot table for dummies in a lot of ways of how you're able to easily analyze and you know segment the different data. And so that's where a lot of our users are going in on a day-to-day basis if they're working on a new business pitch. And this, I'm, I'm talking in the, you know, the idea of an agency. If they're working on a new business pitch or you know coming to their existing clients to come up with new ideas, all of that is there at their fingertips, and that's where the platform comes in. But on the outset, that you know, there's something else that was not covered within those 35,000 data points. And we are mindful of the fact that since we're having such a frequent survey, we don't want, and we want it to kind of fit into the lives of the respondents that we're working with. We don't want it to, you know, be a five hour long survey. The survey's duration is typically about 45 minutes to an hour. And so that keeps the respondents happy and keeps the respondent levels high. And so if for whatever reason, there's a client example we, we use sometimes of they were working with a lipstick company. And they wanted to get information around how people favor different colors of lipstick. And while that's understandable, if you're in that market, there's not really a reason to have that in, within your core survey and asking respondents each quarter questions about lipstick color. But what we were able to do is we have a custom option. And given the relationships we have with these panel providers, we can go back, find the respondents that may have clicked I wear makeup or, you know, I'm image conscious, something like that, that would, you know, maybe fall within that bucket of they use lipstick. And we were able to run a custom survey for them. So we have an entire internal research and insights team that works on our core survey and then also have members that work on the custom survey. So these are any sort of bespoke studies like the lipstick study that we can help out with in any sort of way. And then that data will then live on the platform so it can be compared against any of that core data set. So in terms of how people work with us, it really comes down to how they operate. If they have a robust strategy team and they just need more access and easily accessible data, then you know the world's their oyster and they can come on the GWI and utilize it any way they need. But if there's a little bit more you know, arduousness around the work they're doing and they just need a little bit extra help, we have the resources internally to help them with any anything they may need. I have a quick follow-up. You mentioned Buffalo. Now, that's a relatively smaller market. Do you have enough surveys in place in markets to that size, or how many do you have in markets like Buffalo, Milwaukee, Cleveland, yep. you know, that type of stuff? Can I get that specific, I guess? Yeah. So I'll take it back a quick second. So obviously we're a 10 year old company and we're, con- we're constantly evolving. We're constantly updating our, our questionnaire. We're updating everything that goes along with it. I think when a couple of years ago, our data points totaled about 20,000 and now we're up to 35,000. And so we want to keep it as nimble and, you know, progressive as we can with the questions and types of data that we're capturing. This past quarter, I'm sorry, in Q4, it was just released for Q1, um, we started asking DMA questions. So now we're able to get granular, to use the Buffalo example, if you're looking for stay-at-home moms ages 40 to 50 that drive a car and have four kids and live in the greater Buffalo DMA, you would be able to segment that within our data. As far as the amount of respondents for those DMAs, I don't have that information for you, and it really does vary. Obviously, you know, we'll have more respondents from Chicago compared to Buffalo, but... Right, but I'm just wondering about the statistical reliability. I mean, obviously, the description you just gave is pretty narrow, and if you got it down to a geography like Buffalo, you might be having two that fit that profile. No, you're right. And, you know, that's something we're aware of. And, you know, there's definitely markets that we don't have the the robustness of the respondents, especially if we get that niche. Just to kind of, you know, visualize the platform a little bit, when you're building out that audience, there'll be a respondent number at the bottom. 
Okay. And it'll mention, um, segment our data by what are called waves, and waves is just a quarter. And so you'll see dating back to Q1 or, you know, whatever the quarter was in 2009 when we first started it. And you'll see, you know, when we started asking those questions. So for this DMA example, since we just started asking that within the last quarter, you'll only see one of those waves populated and you'll see the number of respondents that fit within those waves. So you can make a determination whether this is too small to be statistically reliable. Exactly. Yep. And we have different formulas that go into representation of the internet population based on different like census and population data for each country, just so it could be somewhat representative, because obviously we can't ask every internet user in New Zealand, but we, we want them to be representative of their internet population. So we always use the rule of thumb of 150 as statistically relevant. So Chris... What exactly goes into creating a customer profile? It really kind of depends on what you're looking for. So kind of, again, speaking in the terms of agencies, agencies will come to us and maybe they are working on a new pitch and they want to validate the audiences that prospect or that company that they're pitching is currently utilizing or if they're trying to find new audiences. So the example I I like to kind of harken back to is Welch's Grape Juice. And obviously for, you know, many years, their primary audience that they focused on was mothers. And when it came to a juice purchase, those are the ones that were ultimately going to, you know, purchase a juice, whether it's orange or grape. But after... Gee, I would think the opposite. I I would think it's the kids saying, mom, mom, I got to have grape juice. (laughs) Well, of course, but it was the moms taking the kids to the store. So they thought that would, you know, have that situation play out. But the agency actually came on with us and, you know, after looking at it and, you know, kind of playing around with the different audiences that we have and, you know, kind of exploring different things. And one of the questions we asked is who's the primary food shopper in the house? And what they were under, able to uncover was it became males. Males were becoming more and more the primary food shopper. And so to them, they were like, ding, ding, ding. We have an, a completely untapped market right. that we need to be marketing towards. And so they developed an entire strategy around not only marketing to mothers and women, but also marketing to fathers and males. That's interesting. I surprised by that. And so, you know, the the way that it could be utilized for building out customer profiles is, you know, again, that validation, profiling digital audiences, segmenting, uncovering new areas, opportunities for growth for certain brands or clients. It's a very ubiquitous tool that can be, you know, utilized across any sort of team. So whether it's an accounts team that's working on it for, again, just purely growth of current clients or finding new businesses to bring on, or if it's, you know, within the strategy departments, the planning departments, any, you know, we could really be utilized across anything. So is this a subscription model that uh, I get to subscribe to this data and then use the dashboard and then can a la carte go into those custom things like the lipstick example that you That's exactly right, Dan. Okay. It's a subscription model and any of that other additional help that you guys need, you know, that would be an additive to the overall deal. So the big question I want to ask is what's the typical size of a client for you? Is it expensive? We find it to be very affordable, given other uh, market research providers in the space. And as far as the the size, we have customers that are five people. And so we have no sort of, you know, wheelhouse or niche that we find in terms of the number of people at a company or, you know, X amount of revenue. And as far as the affordability, uh, I'm not going to get into dollars and cents of what it costs. Nobody wants to do that. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, But I I can say, given the, the global reach of the data, the frequency, I find that we're, you know, very, very affordable and cost efficient. If somebody has a one-time problem that they're trying to solve, do you have those type of offerings as well? Yeah, that's a, that's a case-by-case basis. If we don't have that data in the platform, we're happy to do the survey on an ad hoc basis. Okay. But if, if we do have that data within the platform, then we would look to have, you know, sign up for a subscription. So Chris, in what circumstances do you feel companies need your expertise most? Yeah, so our, our tagline is know your audience. It's really any any sort of company, agency, publisher that feels that there's you know level of stagnancy when it comes to who they're targeting, who they're marketing towards, especially if they're trying to be a, a bit more of a digital focused company or brand themselves in, in that space a bit more. What we're able to do is we're not just giving you the, the who and the what of an audience, but we're giving you the how and the why. So if you're looking to really fully understand that target audience and you know not to keep harking on that same example, but well, it's just they always thought that women were their target, target audience, but they're able to find out more and uncover that new opportunity for them. So it's really anyone that's trying to better understand 
can better target and have better strategies for what their ultimate business goals are. And that's one of the questions we always try to get a better sense of when we're starting a conversation with somebody is, you know, what what is the ultimate goal of this? What are you trying to do? What are you trying to grow your bottom line, which obviously everyone's trying to do? Are you trying to increase your strategies? What can we do to get you to those goals? And that's where, you know, our accounts team, our customer success team is, is here to help. One more question on the people that you are serving. How long do they stay in your family? So you I mean you're doing a quarterly survey, but if I become a participant, am I there for a year, a quarter, five years? As far as how many times they can take the survey? Yeah. Do you go back to people? I'm just trying to see if you're gauging like trends and but then you're surveying the same people to see if attitudes, habits and that type of thing change. We work to um, have new and fresh respondents each quarter. And so we'll have all that information in our database, the, like our research and insights teams database, so that if we do need to go back and recontact anybody, we can go back and you know reach back out to them and run any of those custom surveys. But So it's a new group every quarter. So Chris, if people have questions, what's the best way to connect with you? Yeah, of course. Uh, you can go on globalwebindex.com. Or my email is just chris.hopkins, H-O-P-K-I-N-S, at globalwebindex.com. Or I can always be reached um, by phones. My phone number is 646-565-7116. And also, you know, we're in London and New York, so if you're ever in the area, just stop on by. But th- those are definitely the best ways of reaching out to me. Actually, I'd like to go to your new office in Greece. <laughs> sure, if you want to head on out there, we'll enjoy some, uh, some olives and some market research. Thank you. I would love that. <laughs> Thanks for being our guest today, Chris. It yeah, was it was great, great talking to you. It was very helpful. Of course. And if you have any comments about today's show or any questions for us, please feel free to reach out to Dan or me on our LinkedIn pages. Your support helps us grow, so we'd love you to take a minute to share, review, and subscribe to Brandstorm. This is Dan Trzinski along with Nancy Christopher at Platypus Advertising and Design, an awesome company that creates perceptions that influence choice. We hope you'll join us next week for another episode of Brandstorm. <laughs>